And now we have Julie Gibbons, who is a symbolic artist and founder of the Mandala Magic School. She's based in Uddingston, east of Glasgow, where she operates a small creative studio making symbolic art and hosting online and in-person workshops and events. She's founder of the Mandala Magic School, has led creative rituals with her worldwide community since 2013. And thousands of students engage with her beloved Mandala Magic practice and yearly free events. So Julie is going to talk about sacred circles, personal and cultural transformation through creative practice. Thank you, Julie. Hello, thank you so much. I'm really delighted to be here today. It's always amazing just, I think, to give ourselves the opportunity to sit in even a virtual circle with other folk and just touch on these things that are perhaps a wee bit out of our normal lives. So I've got a big microphone here and I just wanted to check that everybody can hear me okay. Great. I've also got some slides, um, mostly of pictures, because this work is really quite visual. So I have some slides and I've got my words on paper here. So if you just bear with me, I'm going to bring up some slides and then start reading. So let's see if I can find it. They always change how to work it. Let's see. Okay. So we've already touched on the circle and my creative rituals for healing and transformation that I've been working with for over a decade really are all about the circle because I work with the mandala and the most basic of mandalas is the circle. Humans have a natural propensity for circles so that's why we're beginning there and I just think it speaks to the flavour of what we've already touched on today. The earliest circles I've come into contact with are the stone circles and the rock art formations found across Scotland. Megalithic monuments, henges, circular ditches, roundish burial cairns, they're all elements of our prehistoric past and they show an obvious tendency towards circles as intrinsic elements of ritual activity. When those prehistoric folk looked outside to the world, they'd have seen the rising of the sun, the monthly cycles of the moon, and noticed the effect of those on their home place, the rhythms and cycles of the earth and the sky, the land and the sea. They observed concentric rings that tell the story of a tree, those on the loch after a rock has been tossed in, or a puddle when it's raining. These stories all incorporated their experience of cosmic opposites, day and night, sound and silence, visible and unseen, cold and the warmth, birth and death. As a baby, we progress from the circular-ish womb through the birth canal, a round tube, and onto our mother's breast. The circle is imprinted into our DNA. And we've continued to ascribe meaning to it throughout the years. Many folk with an aversion to maths, like me, might not realise that the root of the word geometry is simply earth measure. In a way, geometry is a means by which to understand the how the earth works through the relationship of form. The traditional tools of the geometer are a set of compasses and a straight edge, and that's pretty similar to those of the mandala artist. The Pythagoreans, who believed in the metaphysical significance of patterns and numbers, saw the circle as particularly sacred 
a representation of unmanifest unity where all cosmic opposites reside. So there appears to be an archetypal force at play that insists on the circle as an essential piece of our human experience. I've always had a creative practice, but it was when I combined mandalas with my art journal practice that I found deep meaning in my work. Art journaling is where you combine visual imagery with words to create meaning. It's sometimes also called visual journaling, and it's usually a private practice, or at least it was before Instagram and social media. And it's a practice that takes place in a sketchbook. Its primary purpose isn't to contain or create fine art or even aesthetically pleasing pages. Art journaling is all about the process and it became my primary practice just before I turned 40. I quit my day job and I supported my mum through terminal cancer. I find myself producing circle after circle in my journals. I'd come across Carol Jung back when I studied communications at Napier in the 80s. And one of my last jobs was for a personality profiler whose work was based on Jungian psychology. So I was familiar with Carl Jung, but I didn't know then that he was fundamental in connecting deeply personal psychological experiences with universal cultural patterns through the mandala. Most folk, if they're aware of mandalas at all, are familiar with the Buddhist or Hindu variety where the mandala is employed as a tool for spiritual guidance and contemplation. Jung appropriated the Sanskrit word mandala to describe the drawings that he and his patients were making during the early part of the 20th century, because he formulated that the spiritual journey undertaken in those Eastern traditions was akin to what he described as the individuation process. And this is essentially the journey to become our whole true self, reaching our full potential and integrating all aspects of the psyche. After discovering Jung's relationship to the mandala, I knew this was the way for forward for my creative practice. And shortly after my mum died, and I find myself instinctually building ritual into the work, even before I was conscious of it. Mandala art journaling is how I experience the sense of what lies beyond the everyday and how I navigate the challenges of life. I learned more about it and I developed a process called Mandala Magic that I've been practicing and sharing since 2013. The mostly women who join me in community are seeking some form of transformation. And for many of them, it's a rediscovery of their creative self. And that creative self might have been cut off from their everyday for as long as 60 years or more. Who amongst us might have been told at school or might even feel now that we can't draw, we're not creative. But creative practice is about so much more than producing fine art. There's often a tangible output, but it doesn't always end in a completed piece to share. The process is valuable in its own right. After meaning, the most sought after reward for me is the experience of creative flow. The flow state is hot property for science and research right now. The benefits of flow state are well documented and not least that folk who regularly do experience flow suffer less from depression. And there are just so many rituals involved in a creative practice of this type. We clear the space to create, we gather the energy for it, we lay out our tools and our supplies just right, we call upon our guides and our allies, we set our intention, and we allow a mandala to appear from beyond our conscious awareness. It's pure magic. Now, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a therapist, and I'm not a counsellor, but I do specialise in symbolic art. And back when I studied communications at Napier in the 80s, my line of inquiry was the symbolic art of the Picts, our ancestors here in Scotland. And 
It's a combination of this attraction to the symbolic, the creative practice of exploration and expression through art journaling, the creative ritual of finding flow and the unique qualities of the mandala that have led me here. For those of you who are not familiar, mandala is a Sanskrit word that can be translated in many ways, but it's most often translated as magic circle. A mandala is usually a geometric diagram, most often circular, with a fixed centre and a radial design that meets the circumference. But it's so much more than that description. A long time ago, I came across the definition of the mandala as a container of essence. And for me, that is the perfect description. In two dimensional form, like you can see here on the page, the mandala is concerned with the relationship between the center and the circumference. And if we look at this from Jung's perspective, the center might be the ego, the surrounding area might represent different aspects of the psyche. For Jung, the mandala forms that he and his patients created were representative of their struggles towards becoming the whole true self that he believed was the focus of the second half of our life. And it's funny, most of us here are probably in that place, right? Jung eventually described nine types of mandala symbolism that he could relate to the individuation process and his work contributed massively to the field of art therapy that you might be familiar with today. You might have heard of it, you might have experienced it. But how does it work outside of a clinical setting? If the mandala represents individual psyche, how can it also relate to community healing? Well, what if we were to think of ourselves as being at the center of our own mandala? Where does the circumference end? What radiates from us and has an effect on everything, everybody, every more than human being in the world? And that's community in action. That's mandala. So the mandala is a perfect container for our inner work. Here you can see a mandala I used to help me with a recent dream, just working with all the different symbols there. But when we turn our contemplation outwards, we can begin to identify, to organize and understand what's going on and use the mandala just as we would for personal work. So here's one on the left that I created back in October last year. This was a fire ritual in response to the escalation of Israel's occupation in Palestine. And next to it, you can see one that I created in response to COP26 and the declaration that was made by the governed free state. We might find ourselves unable to verbalize our feelings, but the mandala has taught me that I can use it to develop a visual language that each of us has at our fingertips, our original digits, the original digital tool. And you don't have to be a skilled or an experienced artist to work with this process. My community, it's based across the globe. We've got folk from Australia, South Africa, Mexico, Europe, the UK and North America. Some of us, in fact, are joining together on Saturday night to create Mandala Magic. We form a magic circle on Zoom, just like this. We create magic in person and across pixels. And what we're doing is we use cultural patterns to express deeply personal experiences and then we share. We find meaning in the connection, transformation in the practice and healing in the witnessing. So the mandala is a design principle. It's a spiritual tool and a therapeutic device for sure. For me, it's community, it's process, it's practice and it's principle. So that's me, that's all I've got to share right now. So thank you so much for listening. Really appreciate you all being here. Thank you so much, Julie. Again, we'll just take silence to digest your sharing.